have you got? But can you see everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So today I'm going to show you guys how to do the wax inlay technique. And the first thing that I should caution you about this technique, and this is a technique I do all the time, is that when I do it, I'm working on greenware. So it means that this piece has been made and it's completely dry, completely void of water. Um, the caution with that is that, you know, I pretty much tell you guys to never do anything with greenware mm -hmm. because it's very fragile. So you have to have a sensitivity to the clay and know that you're not going to, you know, break something off. Now, I mean, the best way to gain that sensitivity is to actually break something because you don't, you know, know what it's going to be like until you get to that point. So if you do choose to do this, you have to be very, very careful with your pieces as you're doing it. So the first thing I'm going to do is take wax resist. I haven't got much in here, but it'll be enough. And I'm going to use, I got this brush, which is a, specifically for wax, although I'm going to show you how to clean it in the end. And the biggest thing that students do wrong with wax resist is they put too much on because it's clear. So they think they have to glop it on until it's yellow, but you actually want to try to not put much on. And I decorate the bottoms of my pieces, so I put it everywhere because I'm not really sure when I do it which is exactly where I'm going to add decoration. Bless you. And if I don't get it completely covered, then when I add the underglaze to it, it'll just stain the part that I don't have covered. So I just cover the whole thing with it. And if I see it beating up, I try to move it around because the beads are just going to be thick spots. So I try to move that around as much as I can. Now, I used to kind of, well, I've done this a couple of times and I've learned that I actually think that it is better to apply the wax and decorate on the same day. because um, I think the wax becomes a little bit brittle after a day or two, and it's more likely to chip, and it's, it wipes off easier, and I could be totally making this up, but it's been my experience that it seems to wipe off a little bit easier um, as well. So I like to do it and then design it. Of the clay that I am using here has no grog in it whatsoever. It's very smooth clay body. So when I make lines, I get a pretty straight, smooth line. Oh, I forgot one important thing. If you have grog in your clay, every time your tool hits a, um, a piece of grog, it's going to make a little, you know, bump in the line, but it's okay. Okay. So then sometimes I have myself, because I get impatient and I don't like those thick spots, I keep an extra little sponge around that I can get wax on and it's not an issue. You really don't want to do it on your sponge and your toolkit because if you get wax on your toolkit sponge and then you go and wipe it on a square pot or something like that, you can actually get wax resist on that pot and then when you go to glaze it, you'll get a bald spot and you'll be very happy. So I try to keep the things that I'm gonna use my wax on separate, and I'm just wiping off excess stuff with it. I just cut a piece of foam so that I can do that. I'm just cutting off the extra. And then this has to dry, so that only takes a second. But what I'm gonna do while it's drying is show you how to clean the brush. So, and it's not going to be a very good demo because I'm here instead of at the sink. But um, you, with wax resist, you want to use soap and water. So I would take this to the sink and get it wet. And then I put the soap in my hand. And hot water, although not scalding hot, but hot, hot water is nice because the, um, it softens the wax too so that you can get it all out of there. This isn't hot, but... So I really work the 
soap into the bristles and then hot water and that's how I kind of clean my brush and my sponges. Okay, so while I was doing that, hopefully that dried up a little bit. Now I'm going to do my design work. So here comes rule number two that I'm going to break that I always tell you guys, which is never incise with a pin tool. But with this you can't. Because, because it's totally greenware, first of all, it's already started shrinking, right? So your line doesn't shrink as much. Second of all, um, I'm going to do my cloud design. I don't know if you can see very well. I'll try to do it like this. saying there about <laughs> greenware. Uh, oh, the other thing is uh, when you do this, um, you don't get those burrs like, or those sharp spots that you do when the clay is leather hard because it's greenware and it just kind of brushes away. Um, you can keep like a damp sponge or just barely damp to kind of like wipe it clean as you're working too. So I would just keep going through here. And basically what's happening is I'm carving through the wax into the greenware. Oh, it's good with the videotaping? <laughs> is it for Jorlin? Yeah. She's not here. Okay. You're welcome. to do like fun zen tangly things in there. And you could just really play and get really fine lines with this. Also don't wear black pants because as you can see I'm making a huge mess out of myself. Um, these little crumbly bits here, just so you know, because they're greenware, right? So when they go in the air, um, like, I don't, that's another reason I, w I don't want you guys to work with greenware, is because when the dust particles go up in the air, then you breathe them in, that's the free silica, and that's the silicosis stuff, right? Now, I have found a couple things help. Number one, the wax actually kind of adheres to them, so it's not as powdery, you know? It's, it's, it doesn't seem to blow up into my face, which is good. Otherwise, I would rethink this technique. And then the other thing is, is the more you can, um, like I usually sh like shake whatever I can into a garbage can, and then the more you can clean with wet things, the less dust you're gonna create. So if you have, by you. I don't like to, to um, use the sponge right away because I don't want to brush those crumbs back into the cracks that I, you know, the lines that I just cut out of there. So I like to get as much off as I can just by like shaking it into the garbage can before I wet wipe it. Yeah. Alright, so that's like one set of clouds. So the first thing I would do is over a garbage can or something. I'd get off as much as I could. And then, if you have that damp sponge, you can kind of like wipe it clean. Or sometimes I'll just use one of these that's kind of dry, actually. You can just wipe it. And I'll get those crumblies off without kicking up a bunch of dust, okay? So, the next thing I'm gonna do, after I would f finish designing everything I wanted to design, I'd end up add my underglaze. Um, you can use any color you want because you can make the lines any color you want. <laughs> I usually choose black and then I add the stroke and coat so after it's been bisqueired over the top of it. And I'm going to use a different brush for this. And then if I was a good teacher, I'd have an actual paint palette. <laughs> 
and and um, sometimes I thin it out like if it won't go down into the lines I'll put just a little bit of water in my brush to make it go in there and then what you can do is you can just paint right over it And this is where I would probably add water to this because it's not going in the lines. It should just kind of flow into there. And since the wax is all over the rest of the cup, it won't get black on the cup. When I go to wipe this off, the black will only stay inside the lines. should have clean and non-waxy sponges and non-waxy water but so if you over wipe it you will begin to wipe the wax off so at the end I kind of like dab it because and I don't wipe the wax off as easily when I do it on the same day um, as I as I have found like if I wait a day but you have you do have to be a little bit gentle when you're wiping so that you don't wipe the wax off too Okay, so that's what wax in my is. Okay, so I just took out a couple of pieces that were in process, so you can see. So this one is actually bisque fired. So you can see that when it gets, this is how I do some designs on the bottom. So you can see that when it gets fired, how that actually looks. And then this one, I played with the idea of putting different colors aside from just black in the designs. Um, as well, these are decals, but over here with these designs, I was playing with that. So you can play with this a lot and do all kinds of different things. You can put an underglaze on before you put the wax on, and then you can carve through it. I didn't carve through in that one, but you can do lots of different things to get different techniques with that.